Statistics is the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. Statisticians collect information to describe a given event. That collection of information is called a data set. We can use data for different types of statistics. The first type is descriptive statistics, which is the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data. An example of this is something that interests all students, your academic transcripts. This shows your grades for each of your courses. This is organized usually by semester and the variable is summarized, which is your GPA. The second type is inferential statistics, which consists of generalizing, performing estimations and hypothesis tests, determining relationships among variables, and making predictions. One example for this, amongst many, would be predicting the grades based on your transcripts. If all of your grades from ESG courses have an average of 90%, it is very probable that you will obtain a grade of approximately 90% on any other ESG courses that you will take. One crucial distinction to make when doing inferential statistics is the difference between sample and population. A population consists of all subjects, humans or otherwise, that are being studied. As an example, if you were to do a study on the population of Canada, you would have to take observations and measurements on almost 35 million people. That's not only huge, it's exceedingly time-consuming and expensive and an impossible task if you're not Statistics Canada. Instead, you would have to select a group of subjects from that population. That's your sample. When selecting a sample, you have to make sure it is actually a true reflection of your population. So, if your sample was comprised of people that only come from downtown Toronto, it's fair to say that it doesn't truly reflect the diversity of the Canadian population. To make sure your sample is representative of your population, you must use one of four sampling strategies. The first strategy is the random sampling strategy using chance methods or random numbers. So the first thing to do is to number all of your objects in the population. For example, if you had 100 subjects in your population, you would give them each an individual number ranging from 1 to 100. Then, you could pick those numbers from a bowl or a paper bag. Unfortunately, there's still some risk of bias. Did you really cut all papers exactly the same size? Your best bet is to use tables or random numbers, usually found in all good stats books, or you can make your own via Excel or any other computer application. Pick a number by closing your eyes and pointing anywhere on the table. That would be your starting number. Here, we have picked 57. For your following number, go down the column and then down the next until you have the desired amount of numbers. Make sure you discard any doubles or any values that are not included. For example, a value of 102 if you only have 100 subjects. And voila, there's your random sample. The second sampling strategy is the systematic sampling strategy, where you select subjects according to a randomly selected starting point and then by a fixed interval. Consider this string of Christmas ornaments. There's too many here to decorate your tree, and you must select only 10. You've picked this one randomly as a starting point, and want to select every fifth one until you get 16 of them. But you must be careful of your interval or how your subjects are arranged, as this can strongly bias your sample. For example, if you had chosen 8 as an interval here, starting on any Christmas tree, Notice how your sample will only hold trees, which is not very representative of the population of Christmas ornaments you actually have. The third strategy is the stratified sampling strategy. You can divide your population by a given characteristic you wish to study. The resulting groups are called strata. Say you'd like to determine travel time of students within the university. It would make sense to divide the students by their modes of transport, right? Well, by doing this, you are dividing your subjects in different strata, different groups. Then you would choose samples within these groups. 
The fourth and last sampling strategy is the cluster sampling. You can group your population in different clusters or groups and then use all of the subjects in the clusters as your sample. For example, if the student council wanted to gather information on the need for another coffee shop on campus, they could randomly select five courses from the timetable and then interview all of the students present in class at that time. Well, now that we have a sample, we are ready to start taking data. This table shows a data set on planets in our solar system. Data sets show the different variables measured or observed in the columns and the objects or elements on which these variables were taken in each of the rows. As such, we can say that Saturn's diameter is of 100 20,535 kilometers and that Mars's orbital period is of 687 days. The database structure with variables on columns and objects on rows is the conventional way of organizing your data. There are two types of variable that can be used to compute statistics. The first type of variable is the quantitative variable. As the name says, it refers to anything that relates to quantity. These are by default numerical and can be counted, ranked, or measured. Here are a few examples of quantitative variables. We can split these in two categories. The first of these categories are the discrete variables and values that can be counted, such as the number of children, number of texts per day, and the number of exams you may have in a semester. The second category are the continuous variables, so values that are obtained by measuring, such as distance between two cities, time between your two classes, and temperature of your dinner. The second of these types is the qualitative variable. As the name suggests, it refers to anything that refers to quality, but be careful because qualitative variables can be disguised in numbers. Here are a few examples of qualitative variables. We can also divide the qualitative variables into two categories. The first category is nominal, which classifies data in mutually exclusive categories with no ranking or order possible. Examples of this would be university departments, marital status, political party, or hockey player numbers. The second category of qualitative variables is ordinal. These can be placed into categories and ranked, but there is no precise measurement possible. For example, course evaluation, letter grades, or the rank in competition.